Hi, I've been working on this drone since last summer. If you want to learn more, just watch this video with more information. I even made it voice controlled with Amazon Alexa and, a and Amazon Web Services. Of course, since then, my experience has expanded. Computer vision has been a recurring theme in my last few videos, so I thought, why not integrate it with drones? However, over the past few days, I wanted to tackle a real-world problem. In light of the recent pandemic, I decided to take on social distancing. I'm aware of the number of solutions that exist, but I wanted to try something new with the Intel Neural Compute Stick and the Raspberry Pi. So enough talking, let's get to the drone. If you're new to drones, let me give you a basic understanding. Right here we have the autopilot or flight controller. In my case, a Raspberry Pi 4 and the Emlid Navio 2 Linux hat running ArduPilot, specifically ArduCopter 3.6.11. ArduPilot is an open source autopilot firmware that provides unmanned vehicle, vehicle control as well as many other features. The Navio 2 is a Linux based autopilot that mainly controls part of the drone. It's primarily the ESCs, or the electronic speed controllers, which can control the motors and spin the propeller so the drone can fly. If you are unfamiliar with the Raspberry Pi, refer to my last few videos. The biggest part of my solution that I still haven't mentioned is the Neural Compute Stick, or NCS2. This greatly improves the quality of the solution. As you may have seen in the TensorFlow object counting video, the Raspberry Pi is really, really slow. It was running about 3 to 4 FPS, which is about 20 times slower than your average computer for perspective. The NCS2 utilizes 16 VPS, VPUs, or visual processing units, to perform inference, and it boosts the performance of the Raspberry Pi significantly. Compared to the 3 FPS of the Raspberry Pi, the NCS2 has about 15 FPS. It's literally five times better. Now that you have a brief grasp of the hardware, let's get into the programming. Attached to my Raspberry Pi is a camera module. This camera gathers real-time footage from the drone's perspective about 15 feet above the ground. From there, the footage gets initialized into this Python program. Simultaneously, a cafe model is also loaded into the Python program. With OpenCV, the NCS2, and the cafe model, Inference is performed on each individual frame, and the coordinates of each detection are identified. The pre-trained CAFE model detects various things, such as cars and bikes too, so detections are narrowed down to people only. Using SciPy, the centroid or center of each person is found. These are then used to calculate the distance between them. If people are not social distancing, then a red bounding box appears around them. However, if they are, a green bounding box appears around them. The biggest problem with deployment was the Navio operating system. Unlike the regular Raspberry Pi OS, it doesn't include a desktop interface or VNC viewer support. If you didn't already know, you can't view the video unless you have the desktop interface. This could be using an HDMI cable or VNC viewer. Therefore, I had to figure out a way to display the frame without using the desktop interface. My solution was to use a web server. Using Flask, I created a web server hosted on the Raspberry Pi which the drone then streams video to. And by entering the IP and port of the web server into your search bar, you can now view uh, the footage and analysis that the drone provides on a basic HTML website. Now let's talk about real life applications. Deployment is extremely easy and simplified as everything takes place on only one device. Performance is on par with security cameras with the added bonus of mobility. All data is streamed real time and can be monitored easily. The program can also definitely be built on. I was thinking of some ideas such as SMS alerts, as well as other ways of notifying, such as a mobile app or speakers. A sample website I use can definitely be built on and can be made more professional. And the coronavirus hasn't stopped, so you must try our best to stay safe. Now for a demonstration of my code. For obvious reasons, I could not fly in public and gather footage. However, the best I can do in terms of demonstration is show the web server and the real-time streaming. Write a comment if you guys want the source code. As well as this, I also made a program that can do the same exact thing on a video instead of real-time footage, so I will be trying to do this as well. To make the programs, I use elements from these two articles, which are going to be mentioned in the description. So now, let's get on to the demonstration. So this is an example of my website. So from the Raspberry Pi camera module, it is streaming to my drone capture website with my IP and port. 
and you, you can see with the cafe model it's going to be detecting what everything that's in the frame so for me it's just a person and you can see the drone propeller is right here and so that's basically the demonstration of the web streaming now on to the video streaming So before I show you the output, I wanted to show you the input of the pedestrian's video that I will be analyzing with the drone and the NCS2. So here it is. So here you can see how it is inferencing each frame. So if everybody is social distancing, you'll show a green bounding box. Otherwise, it'll show a red bounding box around the people who aren't social distancing. And of course, this is really, really slow because, of course, everything's being run on one device and it is streaming to another web server externally. But this can definitely be optimized, especially with the model. You can see a lot of people aren't being detected. But this might just be because of the cafe pretend model. But with a custom model, it can definitely be improved, as well as the FPS if it's being run on a different device or with a different uh, hardware, such as an FPGA or a GPU. But here you can see that everything is working. And green and red bounding boxes are being displayed. So I hope you guys enjoyed my demonstration. And I hope you guys want to build on my code and make it even better. So let me know in the comments if you guys want my source code. And till next time, bye.